Hi, I'm Margaret Pollack, Assistant Professor of Anthropology here at IU Northwest. Today I'm going to talk about recent oral history research I've done with Chicago's Native American community. As a medical anthropologist, I've been working with this community since 2007, originally studying the social and behavioral aspects of type 2 diabetes and its care, which led me to my more recent project on native diets and diet change in city spaces. My presentation today is based upon data from ethnographic and oral history interviews. As a background, indigenous peoples of the Americas face significant disparities in health. Indigenous Americans have high rates of chronic conditions like diabetes and heart disease when compared with other racial and ethnic groups in the United States. These high rates of chronic diseases have emerged in the last half century, in large part due to the shifts in life conditions, in many cases forced upon Native peoples, by colonial and settler policies. For example, colonialism and the reservation policy of the 19th century altered Native foodways in significant ways that scholars believe has led to the current diabetes epidemic in Native populations. While rates of diabetes climbed in reservation spaces in the decades following World War II, they simultaneously grew in city spaces. And this is where my oral history research comes in. In the mid-20th century, the U.S. federal government began the Urban Indian Relocation Program. This is one program among several during the post-World War II era, which were all aimed at the termination of tribal sovereignty. Natives living on reservations could participate in this program, which initially provided transportation to a designated urban center like Chicago, and a little money to get started up in the new place. While many natives migrated to cities through this program, others migrated without the assistance of it. In the oral history interviews that I collected, I spoke with individuals who had lived part of their life in a reservation setting about life changes that they encountered moving to Chicago, and I'm focusing today on discussions related to diet change. Interviewees described the diets that they grew up eating in reservation spaces in several ways. Many interviewees recalled food grown in gardens tended to by adult family members, and meat and protein sources that were garnered through hunting or fishing or from farm animals raised by kin. Much of the food that individuals recall eating while living in reservation spaces was cooked within the household, often from scratch by mothers and grandmothers. Interviewees also described struggles their families faced. Many of the interviewees described the presence of commodity foods on reservations, these were federally allocated food supplies that consisted of foods that lacked nutritional value and contained high levels of fat and simple carbohydrates. The title of my presentation today comes from an interviewee who migrated to Chicago near the end of the Urban Indian Relocation Program in the 1970s. The quotes on the slide are from her interview and her experience moving from the San Juan Pueblo community to Chicago, where she stated, quote, I couldn't quite eat the same things that I had back home. In reflecting on diet changes made once moving to cities, interviewees described a number of shared experiences. They had little to no access to some of the foods that they ate back home, like wild rice, certain types of chilies, hominy, and other foods. Diets, interviewees described, shifted to include foods that were higher in sugar, fat, and grease compared to what they ate growing up. The city had restaurants and grocery stores that were more easily accessible. However, like experiences in reservation spaces, natives who migrated to cities also faced food insecurity. In the city, though, they had few to no places to turn for assistance. In those first decades of the relocation program era, there were no centralized food support services like the commodity food program on reservations or like food banks today. Further, families had little to no space for growing gardens to supplement the food they could purchase. One interviewee who moved to Chicago as a young child recalled, quote, We didn't have much money at the time, so we lived in the car. Moving here was hard at the beginning for my mom. No one would eat it nowadays, but we used to eat cornmeal mush. There was a lot of it then, it was cheap, so my mom made us that. Native American and Indigenous Studies scholars have described that those who migrated through the Urban Indian Relocation Program, a program that policymakers advertised as a way to improve the quality of life for natives who relocated, ended up trading rural poverty for urban poverty, and we can see this reality in the narratives of those I interviewed. Despite these struggles, Native Americans who migrated and chose to stay in city spaces survived and persisted. 
At the annual American Indian Center of Chicago's Giving Thanks Feast in November of 2013, a founding member of the community center led the community in prayer before the meal began. In her welcoming address, she stated that she was thankful for the survival of Native communities from surviving the first Thanksgiving through surviving as an urban Native community today. Since the mid-20th century, Chicago's intertribal Indigenous community has worked to support one another in the city space to aid one another in survival. And this can be seen in the food sharing that has occurred in the past and continues today during the COVID pandemic. An Omaha, Ottawa elder who grew up in Chicago and its suburbs, which enabled her family to have a garden space, describes her recollection of food sharing within the community, stating, quote, having that garden, my mom would can and freeze and put stuff away. And it would always last us until the next spring when he would start planting again. And then I remember he would load up the truck after my mom had all of her shelves filled and he'd bring it to the center and give it away to the seniors and everybody. Indigenous Americans who migrated to Chicago during the mid 20th century faced significant changes in their diet. And I study those changes to understand not only the health aspects of this diet change, but also the social aspects of community support and cohesion. Thank you.